Hi and welcome to this little video explaining some of the weirder techniques that we sampled in uh, our vengeful base library. We'll start with the relatively simple pizzicato stuff and the pizzicato is uh, played jazz style so it's plucked like this. And there are also ghost notes which are plucked in the same way but the note is uh, muted instead of fingered with the other hand so it sounds like kind of a dead percussive sound. Now people get a hold of these samples, they uh, like the sound, they start using it and they start doing stuff like this. Uh, start playing melodies and arpeggios and I'm not gonna say that's wrong, I will say it's not typical of how I use this technique in real life. I will use it more like a substitute for a hi-hat when there's no drums or in addition to a hi-hat where there, when there are. So as little rhythmic accents between pizzicato notes, so stuff like And um, that's how I will usually use it. And there are also slaps, which are more like a substitute for a snare drum, and you can combine the two. And do stuff like this. Uh, we also have um, body percussion noises, so things like that. That I wouldn't use between notes. That is more like a tom fill, where I have like a bar or two, and I don't need to play any notes. I don't need to have my hands um, on the fingerboard so I can kind of whack various parts of the body that are far, uh, far away from a normal playing position. Um, we also have uh, fat pizzicato where the ordinary pizzicato is plucked like this. The fat is with three fingers closer to the middle of the fingerboard. Nice warm fluffy sound, although you can't really play very fast that way. And it maybe doesn't cut through a mix as well, so this would be for the slower, quieter parts of, of songs usually. And um, it also comes with its own matching ghost notes. So that's the pizzicato stuff, and some of this with the ghost notes, it becomes useful to explaining some of the bold techniques, like uh, ghost piccato, which is spiccato, that is fingered like a ghost note and this is also again something that I would use as a rhythmic accent between either spiccato notes or um, regular staccato notes so but that last stroke that wasn't really uh, spiccato was it that was uh, jetta so we also have sampled regular jetta or uh, jettato in Italian and uh, the ghost version is so another useful rhythmic uh, accent technique, um, just a, a useful variation for, for the toolbox. So that is the stuff that I would use to play, um, to make things sound rhythmic, especially when there's no drums. And we have a few techniques which are useful for uh, sort of playing notes the regular way, um, for, um, you know, melodies and arpeggios and stuff. One is tips, tips piccato, which is... Uh, First time I heard somebody uh, play that, uh, I thought it was pizzicato, and I look up and I go, no, he's playing with a bow. Um, mostly useful in the upper register. In the lower register, if you're playing uh, bass parts, it sounds nice, but it's not very powerful, so don't count on it cutting through a mix. But it's a cool sound. Then we have cole, which is uh, also a French name, French for glued or stuck, apparently. And it's... A lot of bow weight, uh, kind of close to the bridge. Very screechy, very aggressive sound. So that's the um, yeah, that's the part stuff that you use to play notes, and then we get into more sound effects territory. Uh, there is the chop, which is a typical fiddle technique used as substitute for a snare drum by fiddlers. On bass, it's not as powerful or impressive, so it's not really gonna make a good snare, but it does make a good kind of. A sound effects noise. Even cooler is the ricochet version. or as I called it in the walkthrough video for the samples, giant insects running around under your floorboards. And then we have um, on the less harsh side, uh, diagonal bowing, which is a very little bow weight. It's kind of like a single stroke of a spectral scrub. Just kind of move the bow towards the bridge. During the note. And another light technique that is also fingered like the ghost notes is wind noise. That is really just 
wind noise. You might think, okay, that's just bow noise, it's not pitched, but actually if you uh, play, a, play a different note, you can hear the, there's a little bit of a pitched component that goes up and down, so you can kind of use this to imply melodies. <laughs> And, but you have to be careful with the muting so you don't accidentally produce some unwanted harmonics. And speaking of harmonics, that brings us to the last technique, that is the unstable harmonics, which we also um, recorded with the eventual cello library. And with the cello, we did it kind of as a, it starts off as a correctly fingered harmonic and you kind of let the fingers slip gradually until it goes bad. So with the cello, it's kind of done like this. It goes uh, screechy, but it kind of takes a while to get there. So by the time I was recording the bass, I figured out that if I kind of move the finger away quickly from the, from the correct position and then kind of slow it down to a grind, then it will, um, uh, then it will kind of uh, get to the interesting part faster and then you know, also use more bow weight and move towards the bridge as the sound goes on and you can get really, really, really screechy, you know, great horror movie sound effect stuff. And on bass you can get some extremely high harmonics also in this area. So it's fun to make all these screechy noises. So if you, uh, you know, so th hopefully this will help you understand how to use these sounds uh, in sample form. And maybe if you're a classical bassist who's got a gig maybe playing music for the Cthulhu silent movie, which I've also done. Some of this stuff might come in handy. So uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.